Hey guys, welcome to another Karara tutorial. Today we're going to be covering um, physics, which is basically a really easy way to animate. So let's go ahead and open a new scene. Um, we're going to stick in a plane. Then we'll add a sphere. And we're going to animate this sphere and have it bounce off the ground. So let's just lift it off the ground a little. Now we're gonna go over here and just click on motion and this little graph box that says keyframe, just click on physics and I'll bring this box up. Now before I go on, just wanna note on this, uh, it says the quality as you're converting the keyframes, just keep it at 50. Uh, you don't really need to pay attention to that, but just keep it at 50 so your scene comes out nice and normal. Now what we're gonna do is simulate the physics so it's just maybe in our timelines right back and then we're going to go up to the little box up here in the corner and simulate physics. And as you can see it's calculating right now. And then we're just going to hit play and you can see how easy that was. You're just going to change the frame rate to 30, make it more smooth. And now what we're going to do, we're going to change the properties. So we're going to go into uh, effects and here we've got all our different options to do things to change the material of the object. So we've got three ob uh, options, density which is going to change the, the level of mass basically and then you've got bounce, quite self-explanatory and the higher the friction the less it's going to move and slide about basically. So as, it, so as you can see I'm using the metal and the density is quite high and the bounce is high so uh, let's just simulate that and we'll go ahead and put a shader on it so let's go into the shader presets and put on platinum aluminium okay and then we'll put in a plane and we're gonna have it tilted so it'll head off and bounce off the the plane so we'll see how that works uh collision detection if you don't know what collision detection is you should use it because it really helps when you're trying to get something exact. So let's go ahead and simulate. And now you see the balls reacting differently, just like a metal ball would. Now the next thing we're going to do is add in forces. So let's go to directional force. You've got point force, Taruk force. Uh, we don't want to worry about those. So let's just use the point force, which is handy. And basically it's the gravity. And up here we have the strength. Uh, just leave it what it is. But just leave it like that and you'll have it nice and clean. And depending on what way you're pointing the directional force, that's the gravity. So let's take a look at how it reacts. So you can see it's quite easy to do that. And another thing you can do is maybe animate your directional force so it'll be being controlled. So this is pretty useful. So let's take a look at how it reacts. And as you can see, the ball just flew up in the air. Just play that again. No. Um, you've got all different forces, so let's not worry about those. Um, I'm just gonna quickly show you here. Um, I'm just gonna make an animation, and I'll show you the kind of things you can do. Um, animating is quite jittery as you can see uh, and that's if you're not using the settings right and you really have to be quite exact so it's kind of awkward using the physics sometimes but you can see the result is quite interesting to see and if you've seen